I mean, sure, but you still have a lot more notes going on here. I do. We're only about halfway through the notes. This is wild. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, well, so before we, we jump to this, I, I will mention I myself have personally designed five sit reps. And I'm not going to lie. They are an adjustment, right? You know, I, I've come from running a lot of fifth edition or fifth edition adjacent. I'm used uh-huh. to just thinking about you know, kill, you know, murder, wife, kill. Like that's that's where a lot of my brain goes. And if I want to do something special, I'll give them like an objective based combat. But those are typically I think most GMs that run 5e will think of the same thing. Those are special occasions when you want to when you want to be a little spicy in the bedroom. Right. Those are a little more rare. But this game is basically telling you. No, you got to spice that. Yeah, only spice. Every every mission is spice. I no white no no white rice out here. Only spice. Yeah, I don't know. And, I I'm going I'm going back and forth in my head on whether I think that's a good idea or not. Like I understand what they're mean, right? Don't have a combat unless it's fucking worth it and it matters. Like I get it. Don't have trash mobs. Don't have random encounters. You know, like get that shit out of here. But at the same time, I think there is a certain degree of like catharsis to just showing your giga chadness and dunking on some fucking goblins but then also but I suppose the thing in Lancer 2 is like a lot of the combat stuff is designed so that you can build your character to not just be the damage cannon machine which, uh, whew, man, yeah, I really can't make a decision about this. Like, I just went back and forth in my head four times as I was talking. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, so remember, there you can just dunk on bad guys. It doesn't say that you can't do standard combat. Right. It's it just, just says it saying, shouldn't be often. Yeah, don't do it all the time. All right, guys, r- random internet demons being I, internet demons again. You really should have Brett deal with that. That was that was a time. Uh, yes, I... It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but everything's fine. I think. I hope. I don't know. That was very concerning. I'm gonna be honest. Fingers crossed. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. As I was saying, it, it allows for, for things to not go player's way and it not be the actual end of the world. Wait, no. Hold That's on. really cool. I, I, wait, no, no, no. You gotta back up more than that. <laughs> gotta back up. Yo, should more. I do the whole thing? I think so. Yeah, because I got really. I lo- I I was deeply lost. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So what I basically what I was saying is, yeah, th- this it's a godsend. You know, it doesn't seem like it at first, because when you're first reading the rules, it can be kind of daunting to have to go like, oh, well, I have to prep like I have to really put in for every combat I run. Like that seems like a lot. And it, and it is. It is a lot. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. But what I was saying was, is it allows each encounter to have real narrative weight behind it. You know, if a player fails, if players fail combat in 5e, it's because either they died or someone that they're like escorting died. And in the latter, that's cool because that has a, like a cool narrative reflection in the game. Like, oh, well, the princess is dead. What do we do now? Can we revive her? Can we not revive her? So on and so forth. But if the players just get murked, well, there's not a whole lot that you can do after that. You know what I mean? There's always this sort of unspoken thing that when you're playing 5e and you're fighting Zariel or whatever, if you die, you die. That's it, right? The game's over, narrative ends. Yeah. But in Lancer, if you're doing a holdout mission, for example, and all of your mechs are destroyed, but your your pilots are alive. Right, right. Well, that's, you know, they can retreat and the story goes on. Now, the it could be their narrative will shift. Are the players near their evacuation point? Does it become a like horror game now that they have to run away from from it's like it becomes Attack on Titan for them, <laughs> except <laughs> the Titans have machine guns and rocket launchers? <laughs> or uh can they try to proceed and like hijack enemy mechs, which could be cool as fuck? Either way, it it yeah. It allows for their narrative to shift dynamically with the, the encounters rather than be make or break beholden to them. And right. inversely, go on. Well, yeah, the, the, it's like the overall objective is to try and make 
well, A, to try and give some of that military feel, right? Because in real life, a military objective is never just going to be kill every single target in an area, right? It's going to be kill a specific target, you know, cover this area, move through to protect this spot. Like, it's all, it's never just going to be kill every single living thing in sight. So it's it's to reinforce that military feel, but also to to get rid of that that 5e D D vibe of of or even that like jrpg vibe of like we're just killing stuff for the sake of xp points and to kill stuff um, exactly so yeah it's supposed to keep things more interesting but yeah i can see how i can also see it's funny because if you do anything too much it can get old right so like no matter how many interest no matter how many interesting objectives you kind of conjure up there at some point players are going to be like can i just hit the bad guy you know yeah of course it's it's funny like that but yeah you can you can still do that though so like perhaps i'm overthinking it a, a bit i mean i i think genuinely if you were running lancer and you wanted one standard combat a mission where you're having two or three combats right it's not the end of the world, you know? Sometimes you want slugfest, sometimes you don't. It, I, I'm not gonna I, tell you like, no. And the game tells you, it, it, you know, the game's not like, you're absolutely beholden to this and if you can't do it, the game doesn't work. The game's just like, hey, look, a lot of the mechanics for the mechs are built around, you know, non-combat based objectives. So to get the most out of it, that's how you get the most out of it. Right. I also feel like, oh, I, I shouldn't I was talking and then looking at the notes at the same time and it just fucking cooked <laughs> cooked the thought. Um I also Excuse wonder me. yeah, I also wonder how the game would work if you did if you did a couple of missions where you only had one combat for the entire mission, but that one combat was quite dense in what's going on, you know? I could see like, that. So what would be really would cool work. is if you had one mission like one combat but the combat was multi-stage yeah that's kind of what i mean by so dense. like yeah like l let's say if you want to do the the behemoth brawl right you want to fight the spirit of mother will if yeah. the mission is you know di uh, disable one of its legs and then you climb up and you know and there, there's like you're fighting bad guys all the way and once you're inside of it that you go you get to take a rest so you can get to repair and heal a little bit right right and then the next stage is fight to the core and then you get to the that would be cool yeah i wouldn't mind that but it, it, it's sort of technically only one combat. It's just stages of combat. Well, I'm also wondering if you could just have one mega combat with like quite a complicated objective that maybe lasts like two sessions or whatever, but it's the only combat for the entire mission. You, know? you could do that for sure. I does does the, game, the only thing does the game tie any form of like progression or anything to how the mission goes down or it's just it's just whether you succeed or fail, right? So succeed or it doesn't in base Lancer, if you fail or succeed a mission, it doesn't matter. You still get paid out. Oh, you okay. still get yeah. to level up, but it doesn't care. Um, it doesn't care how many fights you do in a combat, right? I don't remember that. Before. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, it cares more in the variant rules because it goes into you have uh, major objectives, minor objectives and incidental objectives. So and that's an instance where if an in, if a minor objective is kill everyone <laughs> well you're gonna want to fight as much as you can to make more money right right uh and if you fail using the variant rules you get that's where you get hazard pay which basically says you get half for whatever your upfront pay would be and i uh -huh. as far as i'm aware in the way that i'm running it, it doesn't take uh it doesn't take side objectives in as standard so if you let's say you your main objective is 700 mana, but every side objective is 100. If you still completed three side objectives, you get 300 plus your hazard pay. It's not, well, you only get 350 and then fuck off, you know? I see. That's the way I'm doing it, That because that just seems logical to me. Like, but we did all this stuff, GM. We don't get paid for any of the stuff we already did. And the GM looks at you and goes, no. Like, that That seems kind of weirdly counterintuitive. To right, partial. Partial pay looking for out partial, for partial work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think, it, you know, to a, to an earlier point, 
the cool thing about having these like objectives that go beyond just Punch. kill, right? Is that it really benefits players who don't specifically build for number go bigger. Right. If a player right. like prefers more like role play centric play, they could thrive in a control sit rep or a recon sit rep where rather than having to kill things, they get to interact with the objective. They get to be the person on the computer hacking the satellite array to get into position to shoot the laser, you know? Right, right. Yeah, you, yeah, it doesn't. That is a problem that D&D &D suffers from, right? Where you can't really make a character that isn't going to do number go bigger in some capacity because that's really the only way to win, quote unquote. So, yeah, the idea of you could build a character who is a, like like a thing a lot of people try to do in 5e that often get disappointed because it's sort of unsatisfying is the support type character. You can't really be a support character because there's not that many abilities to really do it. They don't cover that many bases in the game. So with this and the idea that you don't have to just kill everything to win, then you have it opens up the room for the designers to design all sorts of things that are not uh, that are not specifically good for combat, but they're still useful abilities because basically what happens in 5e, right? If you have an ability that's built for something other than combat, it's considered bad. It's a bad, useless ability. Yeah. Which is, yeah, not great. Kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, so a perfect example here with Lancer, right, is you have the Lancaster frame, the like weird horse mech with the trucker on it. Yeah. It literally only has one ability standard. That's a straight up combat attack ability. And it's it's called the cutter mark two plasma torch it does one damage it has a range of one space but it deals 10 armor piercing damage which means it ignores all defenses against objects cover terrain and environments so if your mission is you know uh like the building is collapsing the lancaster goes i can do it and they just gonna walk over and start cutting a hole in the building and that's right. all they have to do for the whole combat right? right and they're completely viable to do that you know, they also have the restock drones, which can like give other Lancers ammo. And so you can do that without attacking the winch cable is it's a winch cable. You're using giant, <laughs> it's, giant vehicles. It's a winch cable. Use your brain. <laughs> yeah. In like a million and one uses, really. Uh, then you get cool stuff like the mule harness, which lets other mechs ride you like a like a combat, <laughs> like yeah, a war horse. Okay. <laughs> There's a great uh, build with Lancaster. I saw where it's a it's a Lancaster and Blackbeard mix, but the two mechs is one is a Lancer, or one is a Blackbeard with Lancaster, and the other one is Lancaster with Blackbeard. And the build is called Alexander the Great and his horse, and Bucephalus <laughs> and his rider. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. My, and the my, idea is they're just super aggro murder machines that like one rides the other into combat dual wielding chain axes. <laughs> now, question: If you play the Lancaster mech, can you like stick a bunch of weapons on that bitch and turn it into a fighting mech if you wanted? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah. Not a bunch of them, but you can stick weapons on it because it has okay. a main auxiliary mount, which means you can have one main weapon and one auxiliary or two auxiliaries, uh -huh, uh -huh. which basically just means. You can put like a cannon, like a Gatling and like a little drone, like a little fin funnel or like two fin funnels or two like attack drones. Uh, and it's got an integrated weapon mount, which doesn't count towards any of your mount slots, which is your latch drone, which uh, I don't believe does any damage. Uh, yeah, it can't make attacks. Instead, it chooses an allied mech within range and make a range attack with against evasion eight. But you could maybe. Oh, you can actually restore HP. That's there's that's very rare. Most you like most mechs cannot regain a, like HP once damaged. You have right, to repair right. them. The only ones that I think can at the moment are the Lancaster because it's got that thing and the Baylor, which is just nanites anyway. So it's just sort of repairing itself perpetually. Mm -hmm. Did you replace the, the repair thingy with some other kind of weapon? No, because it's integrated. It's part Damn. of the robot. So if you, for example, so you can you can. So the cool thing about Lancer is that all that licensed stuff, you can put any of that other stuff on any mech. So you can have a Blackbeard with the mule harness and the sealant spray and all right, that. Right. That's that's all stuff you can do. But if you want to use the Lancer mech itself, it has its own built in systems that you cannot. Repair. That's what makes them unique. I see. It's their class abilities. Yeah. 
uh, I'm just shout out again to the the kid, the the variant frame of the Landcaster that doesn't have any heal abilities, but it has the Jolly Roger orbital satellite weapon. <laughs> oh, oh. That can do three things. It's got one ability called Plunder, which uh, scans every enemy within a certain radius and instantly locks onto them. Swindle, which is a uh, and like a system, like an AOE hack. And then the final one called Shiver Timbers, which fires a weapon that ignores all armor and cover. <laughs> Shiver Timbers. You just hit them with the Hammer of Dawn. <laughs> I see. I love this thing so much. Give me Tim. That's the one I was showing you with the lady who's standing on top of it. It's got the pirate hat and it's got the little robots yes. and one of them is looking out to the distance doing the man. Yes, I, I do know. <laughs> Please put the, that little robot in the thumbnail just to be like, damn, bro. What else? What else did I have? Oh, I mean, the last big thing is is a personal thing, right? Is like, does it have any issues? Is this system perfect? No, obviously not. We've talked about it before. There's a lot of work that will go into this. If you choose to run Lancer and you run it the way it's meant to be run, it's 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 a lot of prep. It's more prep than I think most tabletop RPGs, save for stuff like. You know, um, um, Shadow Run or like VTM. It's gonna be up there with just sheer amount of shit. Shit, I'm doing probably about five to six hours of prep a week. That's a lot of time. I'm not gonna pretend it isn't. And I'm going the extra mile because I'm setting up full character dossiers with character sheets and buy and backgrounds and every character has personalized art. I'm going the extra mile. So it's five hours on top of the rest of that which cuts into a lot of time. Yes, it's a lot. I'm not gonna pretend it isn't.